Welcome believers all over the world. This is Tim and Vicki. You are tuned in to Hear and Be Healed, where we're preaching the word of God, where you receive the word for faith, or faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and that faith you take and you are lay hold to the promises that we're teaching in this Bible. We're excited to continue this teach on, stay on course. We spent the whole teaching plowing up fallow ground, getting you prepared to receive. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I think if we don't get to the place where we don't have our heart right, then it's not going to be a conducive for the Word of God to go in. And I tell you, we're looking for good ground. We're encouraging everyone to have that good ground. We don't want that by the wayside. We don't want that thorn in that stony ground. And you can say, well, I love the Lord. You know, what's that song, uh, Mary, uh, Mary Campbell's, what's her name? Uh, Campbell's. Love I, I love God. Yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and so a lot of us think we love God, yeah. but then he, God said so he's not moved by our lips. He says, you know, what they list, they profess that they know me within their deeds. That's what he's looking at. He's looking at what we do, not what we say. So God's not moved by what we say. He's moved by what we do. And so I want to hit the ground running and hit both of us, all of us, real hard before we pray. And the thing is that, that uh, the Lord was speaking to my heart this, this afternoon while we were getting ready is that we got to renounce hypocrisy. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. We have to renounce hypocrisy. I'm talking about with a vengeance. That goes for you, goes for me, that goes for all of us. And what do I mean by that? Especially us preachers. I'm going to hit us preachers real hard. I'm not going to cut no corners with nobody. Like what did, what did uh, Reverend Easton say? Yeah. <laughs> he ain't going to cut no corners. The right. idea is hit us hard because we, I think we are the ones that set the pace, set the foundation. And I know, and I believe, and I think, I know that the word of God is spirit and life. And we have to be really careful at how we minister because we can minister uh, in a way that we think we're fooling people, but right. the, the spirit of us is coming out. It can't fool people. You know, other people say, my, that message sounded kind of positive, but hmm, something just wasn't quite right. Why? Because we're spirit beings and when the word right. comes forth, it is, it, it, it is supposed to be spirit and life. And so if we're speaking anything of doubt, then the spirit of doubt's coming forth. You speak anything of fear, the spirit of fear is coming forth. And we're speaking anything concerning faith, the spirit of faith comes out. And so what I mean by renounce the hypocrisy, mm -hmm. we as leaders, and I'm going to start with us as leaders, we can't preach one thing and do another. And I'm not just talking about sin. I'm talking about preaching right. faith and talking doubt. You know, it's, it, you see, we can't do the word. Listen to me carefully. We can't do the word when it's conducive. Uh, when it's proper. In other words, when we in church, we mm -hmm. run our, you know, the Christians and the, we, I'm blessed and highly favored. We know how to say all the right things. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we yeah, convenient. We, we, we know yeah. the protocol. Mm -hmm. But then when you get in your secret closet, the real you come out. The real me come out. The real doubter, the real unbeliever comes out. Mm -hmm. And we think we're getting pity right. from God, and, but it's not pity from God. God's like, you know, hey, you think you need empathy, you think you need sympathy, but you really is, are aggravating me. What you're really telling me is you don't believe I'm who I say I am. You don't believe I can do what I say I'm, I can do. Now, the Holy Spirit, so lovingly and graciously and merciful, right. talks to us tenderly. Hey, you might want to tone that down. You might want to change. You might want to remind, I want to remind you what the Word says. Mm -hmm. uh, remember the spirit of Joshua and Caleb. Let's make sure you have that spirit and not the spirit of, of the other ten that, that, that didn't enter into uh, peace, uh, didn't enter into the faith because of unbelief. They didn't mm -hmm. enter into the promises because of their unbelief. Right. And so, in other words, and, and we, we're, we're good at it uh, as, as leaders. We be preaching one thing, we preach it hard, whether it's sin, then you sin it. We preach about faith and you ain't got no faith. Preach mm -hmm. about money, you ain't got any money. Now, mm -hmm. I do believe we should uh, call those things that be not as do what they were, but make sure, make sure we full of faith with it. Mm -hmm. Make sure we're full of faith because I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is not going to anoint doubt. He's not going to uh, anoint unbelief. Right. He's going to anoint faith. And so we that preach the word of faith, as Paul say, we have to believe in the faith that we're preaching. So we're going to talk about God prospering us. Uh, it works when you really believe that God prospers us. There is times that you have to wait. There are times that you're tried. There are times right. that you have patience. Amen. But you've got to believe that that's the word. And Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Why? Because he believed that he that promised was faithful to perform it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a doubt in his mind. Right. Whether we, we see the recording of him mm -hmm. laughing 
where he must have doubted. Now, now, the Bible said when Abraham got to the point to where God showed him these things, he was fully persuaded. Mm -hmm. So we have to get to the place where we're fully persuaded that we can renounce hypocrisy. And like I said, it's us saying one thing and doing and speaking another. And so we stay on each other, whether we say, well, I'm going to come in agreement with that, or yeah, I say, I'm... We just, we just got to talk about it. don't kick me with them down. I say, well, kick me with them down because that's how I don't know we're going to get better. <laughs> In other words, we have to provoke one another to righteousness right. so we can continue to say the right things because mm -hmm. I'm just reminded, James not lying. And God ain't either. Well, that's my best English. God ain't lying. When he said, okay, you double-minded if you want to be, I'm telling you, you're not getting anything. And I'm telling you, write it down. Go back and look over your life and go back and look. <laughs> All the stuff you doubted, did you get it? No, he, mm -hmm. God's not playing. And, you know, he's too much of a loving, merciful God that takes pleasure in doing us good. And all he asks for us to do is trust him. Right. Now, I don't know what you, how you define the word must, but must means a, a definite. Without faith it's impossible to please God for they that come to him, what? Must. Must. Yeah. Must but not, not don't think, don't try. You've right. got to do it. And so look, touch your neighbor and say, look, I got to help you and you got to help me. We yes. got to renounce this hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. We got to make our mouth line up with the word of God and don't say anything but the word of God. If I start talking negative, slap me a couple of times and say, hey, <laughs> what you believing in? Now, either your mouth is going to line up with the word of God or your mouth is going to line up with doubt and unbelief. Because here's the thing about it. I had to learn that. I had to learn it wholeheartedly. So I just started learning to say nothing. If my mind, if I'm worn in my mind and strongholds are set up in my mind to where I'm just trying to figure out, oh my God, how are you going to do it? And then, and I let my mind go on a tangent and it's trying to take me places. I have to pull that stronghold down. And while I'm wrestling with that stronghold, trying to pull that stronghold down, trying to take, a, take authority over that and dominion over that stronghold, I just keep my mouth shut because here's the key. Mm -hmm. Once you speak it, you give life to it. Right. The Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue. So you give life to death is this what you're speaking. You give right. life to life. So once it go out your mouth, that's it. It's, it's alive. You can't take it back. Just like God's word goes out to perform it. You were made in his image. Your word goes out. And you know what? It, if, it, if it's words of destruction, it's going to go forth and do it. And then Jesus said at the end, you're going to have to give an account for it. Right. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, Jesus is going to judge us for every idle word that we say. Every idle word. Every word that was un non-producing, yes. everywhere that was not of, not of faith, he said, we're going to give a kind of, now y'all can, can, can play with him if you want to, but I'm a, let me remind you about your mama. And I ain't talking about your mama. I'm saying I'm going to remind you about your mama. I don't know. I had that old school mama that when you kept screwing up, they didn't whoop you right then. what they tell you? It's piling up. It's piling up. <laughs> and so all them negative words we keep talking, Jesus is saying, it's piling up. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to have to give an account of it, let's, let's stop piling up them negative words mm -hmm. so that when we, in the day that we're judged and the word comes to judge us, it'll be righteous judgment. It'll be that we spoke the word of God and nothing but right. the word of God. So help us, God. Yes. So all this introduction, I hope you had time to go in and like, share, and tell somebody to come in. We're talking about staying on course. And it's, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a a teaching with substance, it's this meat and potatoes and carrots and, and stew meat in it. <laughs> Sometimes, when, even though we're talking about staying on course, we're trying to yeah. teach you how and encourage you how to stay on course because God is giving you a promise. He's mm -hmm. giving you a promise. It's the word of God. You've got to see it come into fruition. Just a quick note and an example. Any farmer in his right mind, if he's going to believe God for a harvest when he plants a crop, mm -hmm. he don't go out there the second day and complain that it ain't working. Right. No farm in his right mind. Yeah. Why? Because he understands the process of harvesting. He understands. Mm -hmm. You plant, you, you till up the ground, you get it prepared, you make it conducive for pro produce, then you plant, and then you wait. And all things being equal, you have to have a little sunshine, a little rain, and all those things work. And then there is a season where the harvest comes. He understands that. He knows the season. He can predict the season. Mm -hmm. He understands the, the, um, the characteristics of the season. Let him know the times of the season. All these things he's learned through experience. God's given us a lot of experience in our life. There, there come a time you ought to, we ought to know when our seasons is coming. Mm -hmm. But if we keep on playing mm -hmm. these games, yes. we never learn these things. We never understand these things. Then we never know how 
things operate in our life. Why? Because we keep being wishy washy. We keep, you know, changing and, you know, God had to keep starting over. And I told you, Father's not into social promotion. If He give you a test and you flunk it, you will be taking it again. Mm -hmm. And He'll be saying, now, this is going to be on the next test. You might want to start studying for it. And I told you, the trials that we face are not to destroy you. They are to try, they are to try you because every man must be worthy of his reward. Right. Every man must be worthy of his reward. God is not just going to give us anything. Jesus made it plain. Mm -hmm. Whosoever will, let him come. Right. Whoso have a, whosoever have an ear to hear, let him hear. So that, word, that, that way he eliminates, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, um, respect the person. He eliminates that. Mm -hmm. Jesus is no respect the person. Yeah. God is no respect the person. And even Peter said this. He said, I perceive that God is no respect the person, but that every man that feareth God and walk right before him, he'll bless him. Right. Whether you're an atheist, just to turn around and believe God. And so you can get mad if you want to. You, if, if, if Hitler had a God born again, out of all the tragedy that he's done, and all the, the, the destruction he did, if he had got to turn, turn around and gave his heart to God and was godly sorry and God saved him, all of that would have been wiped clean. His slate would have been wiped clean. We'd have been still mad and we'd been like uh, uh, Jonah going to Nineveh. Uh-uh. That's why he didn't want Jonah right. didn't want to go to Nineveh because he knew the heart of God. He says, why would I go down and preach them? All they're going to do is repent. You're going to forgive them? No, mm -hmm. I want them to burn. Mm -hmm. See, it's us that are unforgiving. That's why God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. Mm -hmm. My love right. and my forgiveness and my mercy, my grace is immeasurable. And so seeing that we have a God like that, we ought to be taking the benefit of it. Mm -hmm. We ought to be taking extreme benefit of it. So let's pray. Let's get into the word. And we're going to continue to tell a little bit more. And you know, maybe we can get to the foundation and we can go forward. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we thank you right now in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you for the thank opportunity you, to minister your word to your people. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you pour out your spirit right now upon all of us that we can hear and understand this teaching that, Lord, we can look to you to heal where cometh our help, knowing that you are the yes. author and the finisher of our faith. Thank we thank you, Lord, with great expectation that the things that we're here are going to be indelibly, indelibly marked in our hearts that we will take this word, Lord, and be like David and hide in our heart that we don't sin against you. And even just not the sin of acting out of disobedience, but the sin of unbelief, which is the greatest sin, God. And so right now, we set our hearts yes. and our minds to believe you with all of our mind, all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our strength, to know that if you said it, you're not a man that you shall lie. You yes. shall do it and you shall make it good. You yes. shall cause it to come to pass. Yes. And we, this is the confidence that we have, God, in you, that you are faithful and you are just, and you can perform everything that you said you're going to perform. And we have this confidence in you, Lord. And we diligently seek you tonight concerning your word that you may reward us, God, even openly in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the viewers. Pray. I pray for them. I pray prosperity and blessing on them for the crowd of hit to the soles of their feet. If there's anyone, Lord, that does not know you, if there's anyone that's backslidden and need to know you, Lord, I pray that the word of God will be so powerful that gives them that expectation of knowing how good you are, that the goodness of you will lead them to repentance, God, and they'll call upon you. They'll, they'll, they'll renounce sin. They'll renounce the enemy. They'll renounce his word, world, and they'll submit themselves to you, Lord, and be saved that you may come in and give them a new life. For you say that old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new for there will be a new creature in Christ Jesus tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So Amen. stay excited. We're going to keep tilling the ground. Amen. You got to get this in you. In other words, let's go back to that, what I say, renounce the hypocrisy. Lift your hands. Lift, lift your right hands. Put the other hand over your heart. Say, I do solemnly. I do solemnly. Promise to tell the whole truth. Promise to tell the whole and nothing truth. But the and truth. nothing but the truth. I renounce. I renounce all, all of my hypocrisy. Of my hypocrisy. In Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now let's ask the Holy Spirit to help us, because you know how flesh is. Because when you're caught off guard, it's gonna <laughs> come out. So, so Holy Spirit, help yes. us bring all things back to our Thank remembrance. You. I pray that we put a guard over our tongue and over our mouth like a bridle. That we are think before we speak. That when times get hard, when we're being trial, tried, and when we're being tested, going through fiery trials, Lord, that the first words that come out of our mouth would not be the thing that we're going through, the problems that we're facing, God, yes, God. discouragement, God, the disappointments, but that we'll speak and declare the word and call those things that be not as though they were. We will declare the word of the Lord. We shall have the spirit of Joshua and Caleb to say, yes. if the Lord delighted us, he 
you, we are well able to do what we have placed on our heart to do. You said you'll give us the desires of our heart. You said you are able to do exceeding and abundant above all that you can, we can ever ask or think according to the power of the work of the Holy Spirit. You are that power. Help us in the time of need. Be our comforter. Let us know that we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. And so therefore, we're leaning on you to help us in this time to govern our tongue, that all of our words are not stout against God, but they are faithful toward God, for he is our faith. He is the one that dealt to us the measure of faith. He is the one that is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the developer of our faith, and he is the one that causes our faith, oh God, to rise and to accomplish the things and to obtain the things that we're believing you for in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Now say, I believe I receive. I believe I, I believe receive. I, I believe I receive help from the Holy Spirit yep. so that when time gets hard, I don't just throw in the towel, kick up dust, mm -hmm. and start talking like I done lost my mind. <laughs> because the idea is God is listening and, 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 and it's, it's easy to, I, I don't know why it's easy to say the right thing in church hallelujah thank you Jesus mm -hmm. and we chant about a high and, 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 and we know all the right things to say right. in that moment but it's that time when the devil catches us off guard whether we by ourselves or we around people that we can be ourselves and we can let our hair down then all the truth comes out whether, whether pastors you know talking crazy in the family we can't do this and, and I, I don't know when God's gonna do that no, listen listen mm -hmm. don't worry about them hearing you right. worry about God Almighty hearing you and his ears are always listening and I'm telling you, you better go read the book of Malachi when he hear that stuff it 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 it, 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 it hurts into his heart mm -hmm. yeah hurts into his heart but then there are those that he hear speaking good things and mm -hmm. he's writing it down in the book you know, I don't just want my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want my name in the Book of Remembrance. Amen. I want him to remember I me. Mean, he, I want him to be sitting up and him and Jesus talking and saying, you know what? Tim been waiting a long time. I think, it's, I think his patience is holding up. Mm -hmm. I think it's about time we call a due season to come in his life. Amen. Thank I don't want him to look and say, Jesus, oh, how Tim doing? Yeah, oh, Lord. <laughs> I hear from his angels. <laughs> He ain't too happy. And right. he, he, he really hadn't been confessing the word of God. And, and <laughs> matter of fact, uh, I've been thinking about paying him a little visit because I think he's about to, you know, sink his ship with mm -hmm. his loose lips. I don't, want that, I don't want that to be the Lord's discussion when he's speaking to the Father concerning me. I, I, want, I want him to be like the king was when he said to Haman, hey, what shall we do for this guy that did all yeah. this here? Amen. And Amos said, oh, put a ring on the finger and a robe on and ride it through the city. Let me know it was his enemy he was talking about. I want God to speak that way about me, but I'm not his enemy. I'm not the Lord's enemy. So think about it. If Haman would speak those things, how much more so would the Lord bestow upon me all the good blessings? For Jesus said, it is his good pleasures to give us the kingdom. Amen. It is his good pleasures. And so the reason why I'm so excited because we do have a God that is concerned, and he wants to be involved. So many times I, I watch television and I watch how we minister, even myself, and we just keep talking about a God that's going to do something. One day God's going to do something. And I'm like, okay, when is that message going to change? God is not waiting on us. Right. Uh, I mean, God, we're not waiting on God. Yeah. He's waiting on us. And mm -hmm. there are things that we just need to do to uh, lay hold to it. And then when I look at the Bible and I say, okay, Lord, when Jabez prayed, bam. When David prayed, bam. Yeah. When Abraham prayed, bam. It wasn't no toiling and wrestling. I think the toiling and the wrestling comes when it's in us. Mm -hmm. When you're wrestling with the doubt. When you're wrestling with the unbelief. When you're wrestling with mm -hmm. how, how he's going to do it. Right. Now, think about now, now the, the children of Israel, Hebrews or whatever. If they wrestle, they only wrestle for a moment. Hail Mary. Highly favor of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt be with a child, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And she like, okay, hold up. How is this going to be seeing I know not a man? Mm -hmm. Just that moment. And when he explained it to her, bam, be it unto me, mm -hmm. according to thy word. <laughs> Let me have it. Right. We still be talking about, I, 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 I still don't get it. Mm -hmm. See, we can't be like the man, the noble man that leaned on the king's hand when the mm -hmm. word of God came for him and said, hey, by this time tomorrow, you know, God's going to turn this economy around. And he says, nah, I don't believe that. You know, if God opened the window of heaven and poured out blessings, how could this thing be? And the man of God says, you're going to see it, but you ain't going to eat none of it. Mm 
Mm -hmm. It wasn't the fact that he says, how can this be? He said, it can't happen. So God don't have a problem with you asking how you're going to do it. Just when he tell you how to do it or tell you he's going to do it, just accept and say, well, be it unto me. Amen. Thank Come on. Yes. I want you to practice that and get that in your spirit. Be it unto me. Come on, say it with me. Be it unto me. Matter of fact, you ought to type it in the comment section. Be it unto me. So when you read a promise in this book, and, and the promise says, and blessing I will bless thee and multiply, I will multiply thee. When you read that, scratch Abraham's name out, put your name, say, be it unto me. Okay, matter of fact, I just read one Isaiah 58 and 18. What, let me read 15. Now, this is the problem. We're going to get to the stuff after a while. I'm, just still, I'm still trying to be a good ground so you get this word in you so you won't forget. How many of you, let me give you a quiz, pop quiz. How many of you, this is just a question for the pop quiz coming later. How many of you at least listened to the video three times? Yes. Hey, say, 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 say me. Me. Okay. Now, here's, here's the pop quiz. What are the three P's that is very important in the lesson that we're going to be talking about? What are the three P's? Mm -hmm. Let's see if you, because if you're listening to it at least three times, you know what those three P's are. Mm -hmm. Anybody wrote one of them? Yeah. yeah. yeah you one. They wrote some? I ain't talking yeah. about you. Oh. Did you write them? I was, I ain't put it. Cheetah, cheetah. No, I didn't press it. I didn't press it yet. Okay. <laughs> oh. Let me, see. Let me see if somebody wrote it down yet. Somebody. I'm gonna like burning set, burning magnet. Don't mess with me, man. Don't don't uh, don't mess with me, man. Jarrell wrote it first. Okay, all right. Purpose, patience, and persistence. Oh, my man. Jarrell, <laughs> my man, all my right. man, my right. man. Right. We're gonna Jarell get to those because they're very important. Because you know, <laughs> we're not just throwing words around. Oh, he's trying to yeah. be poetic. Three poem, three points, and a three points and a poem. No, I'm trying to give you something easy so you could remember those mm -hmm. things because. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and that what that are the call according to what you have down. No, I, I have. Okay, now. All right. And call according to what? It's purpose. It's purpose. So you've got to have a purpose. A man without purpose is a man that's not looking for life. I, 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 you know what? A lot of people get discouraged and depressed because they have no purpose. You, listen to me, I promise. Mm -hmm. You find me somebody that has purpose and know their purpose, and I'll tell you that's a person that's successful going somewhere to happen. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's successful, you if you listen to every successful per person, you will find out they had a purpose. Purpose, they knew their purpose. The, 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 the problem with a lot of people is they struggle through life, they end up being unfulfilled, unsatisfied, mm -hmm. because they really don't know what their purpose is. Right. They, they, people end up in the wrong field, they don't know their purpose. People end up in the wrong relationship, they don't know their purpose. Mm -hmm. And so you live an unhappy, unfulfilled life because you don't have your purpose. The key is, and this is a hint, if you can find your passion, your passion, your purpose is, is somewhere locked up in that passion. Mm -hmm. You find your passion, You'll find your purpose, then you'll find out what God wants you to do. For God has placed in every man's heart his desire. God has placed in you a desire. What excites you? Mm -hmm. What moves you? What motivates you? What irritates you? I'm going to say that again. What moves you? What motivates you? What, what irritates, irritates you? you? Things like what bothers you? Mm -hmm. See, Harriet Tubman, slavery bothered her to the point to where she was willing to risk her life to set the slaves free. free. Amen, yes. So you would say, man, that was a risky purpose, but it bothered her. Mm -hmm. And so people do things. Um, Reinhard Bunke didn't like to see what was going on in Africa, so he had a passion for Africa, found his purpose there, and led tens of millions to salvation mm -hmm. because in his passion, he found his purpose. You have to find that. And, and uh, your passion and your purpose don't always have to be so noble. Mm -hmm. It just has to be something that's productive right. and profitable. But li listen to the scripture I read. It says, uh, this is your God. I, even I, have spoken. This is Isaiah, the 48th chapter with 15 verse, I'm in 15 and 18 verse. He said, I, even I, have spoken, yea, 
I have called him, I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. God's going to make your way prosperous. And then over here, listen to this here. Oh, that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments, then had thy peace been as the rip. Oh, no, 17, I'm sorry. This is verse 17. Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit. P-R-O-F-I-T, not P-R-O-P-H-I. I am P E P H E T. Profit. That means profit. Profit. Mm-hmm. Bottom line. Yeah. Margin. Which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. There's another scripture that uh, God says. When you go into the land, don't you forget that it's the Lord thy God that giveth thee power to get well. Yes. God is all, all these things that mm-hmm. God wants to bestow upon us. And so we're not talking about a God that's getting ready to do things. We're talking about a God that's sitting like a racehorse ready to jump out of a stall to bestow up on us right. every bountiful blessing that we can believe him for. Believe him for. Mm-hmm. For the Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth looking for that heart whose per- heart, for that one whose heart is perfect toward him that he may show himself strong in. Yeah. So God is looking to bless us. What is um, Jeremiah 29, 11 says? For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, the thoughts of peace and not of evil, uh, to give you an expected end. Mm-hmm. Back to Jesus. This is good places to give you the kingdom. All these things that God wants to do for us. And so most of the teachings we hear a lot is us getting right with God so we can live for God and that we can go to heaven. And it seems mm-hmm. like a one-sided relationship. But my mind just transcends that I'm talking about a God that has a relationship that this is a this is a 100% give and take I'm serving him he's blessing me anytime I have a need think about your heavenly father mm-hmm. well think about your natural father I'm talking about a good father a one who has a heart to be like that one that protects and provide mm-hmm. protects his home and provide. Right. I'm not talking about one that's sitting up there on the sofa, bring me a can of beer, complaining about who ain't done what. All he want to do is bring halfway pay the bills, you know, ain't doing what he's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Now I'm talking about that one that makes sure everything is right in his house. Right. I always say this here. A good king rules his kingdom well and mm-hmm. all of his subjects are loyal and happy. Right. I'll say this again. I always said that. I, 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 I said that when I was young before I even started preaching the gospel. I just that, that just was something that rang with me. A good king ruled his kingdom well, and all of his subjects are happy and loyal. And and, and I see that as a husband in his family. When a husband rules his household, mm-hmm. everybody's loyal, and everybody's happy. Right. When he rules well, you can't come in there being brash and brute and telling folks, "I'm the man. I wear the pants, and, <laughs> and you know it's what I say and where to go." That's not ruling well. Right. The idea is, what do I do to add peace to my home? Because it's not always about me being right. It's about me being righteous. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you have to lend mercy to be righteous. Sometimes you have to have forgiveness to be righteous. Sometimes you have to right. overlook things to be righteous. So I like how Pastor Marjorie sang this song. You say, somehow I made it. And she says, sometimes I have to give up the right for the wrong. You know, and sometimes you have to you, huh? yeah. give up the right to conquer the wrong. Well, um, sometimes she said, I know how she said yeah. it. <laughs> and so the idea is there are some things that we have to give. Look at Jesus. Yeah. He had the right to call down legions of angels, but he says, no, Father, forgive them for they know not what, what they, they do. do. That's yeah. being righteous. And so when you rule in your house, mm-hmm. sometimes I, I learned this about in relationships with me and my wife. It ain't always about me being right. At the end of the day, what am I looking for? Uh, peace. Peace. Amen. How do you get it? So sometimes you have to say sorry when you ain't sorry, when you think you ain't sorry, when you know you're not sorry. <laughs> doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, Tim Amen. wants some chicken and cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> and so me wanting to be right, that ain't going to get it. So uh, i just rather just have peace. So all these things help build you up to be the person you be. We'll stop all the hypocrisy. Don't be saying one thing and doing another. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back and reiterate on that before we get into this here. Because the Lord is watching your mouth. Don't think he's not. Now, if he already told you, I'm looking at every word. You're going to give an account of every idle word. Let's not be saying the right thing. If your flesh can govern you to say the right things in the right places, 
then you can, you can govern yourself to say the right things in the wrong times. In other words, when you're right. not feeling like saying the word of God, when you feel like all hell is broken, broken loose and, and everything is going wrong, when you want to just cuss, and some of us do cuss, and we're not mm -hmm. saying the right thing, uh, keep, get your mouth in line. So right. I'm saying all this here, stay the course. Mm -hmm. Now you lifted your hands and you said, I was walking, I was something promised to tell the truth and hold the truth, and nothing but the truth. That I renounce yeah. hypocrisy, that I'm not going to be saying one thing, oh, the Lord is this, and I'm blessed and highly favored. And I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I'm so sick and tired. Ever since I got born again, this whole hell been breaking loose. No, that ain't the right thing to say. We're going to help each other. Right? Right. <laughs> We're going to help each other. <laughs> Keep them lips tight. Speak the word of God, don't um, nothing but, say, speak the word of God, nothing but the word of God. So help you, because it's going to help you. Because I'm telling you, God is listening. He's listening. He's listening well. And there are some times where he places us in position, places us in situations, mm -hmm. just to test our heart. Yeah. How do God know what's coming out of your heart, mm -hmm. out of your mouth? Because out of the bones of the heart, the mouth, mouth speaks. speaks. So he's going to find out what's in your mm -hmm. heart. And you, we know, you do know he can read thoughts, though, right? He can read <laughs> thoughts. But I know the thoughts and the intents of your heart. Mm -hmm. So he, he can do that. But you know what? When you speak it, that just justifies and solidifies where your heart really mm -hmm. is. So sometimes he'll put you out there to right. see. Let's see what Tim will do in this situation. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, you know, it's about seeing. It's about your mouth. Hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't pass. Right. I'm going to see him let him build his faith up a little bit more in the word, and I'm going to stick him in another situation. Slap your neighbor and say, come on, let's pass this test let's so we can go test. to the next level. Somebody say next level. Type next, next level, level anything, and we're going to read next these scriptures and get level. some foundation. Next level. Everybody want to go to the next level. Everybody talking about heaven. Apostle Rob said, everybody talking about heaven. Show ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to go. And I don't want you to just go to heaven. I want you to have heaven here on earth. So what we're going to do is we're going to read some scriptures to build a foundation. We're talking about staying on course. Now, I hope all that tilling we done done, then broke up all the fallow ground and pulled out all the rocks and the concrete so that the word of God can go in. And I'm telling you that when we pack the soil back over the word, that you, the word is guarded. Like David says, I hid this word. I'm guarding it. I'm making sure that it's going to produce. And we're not going to go for the 30 or the 60. Well, we're going straight for the what? Before we're going to, we're not going for the thirty to sixty. We're going, we're for, going the, for the hundred. We're going for the hundred. Yeah. <laughs> we're going for the hundredfold. Okay. That's our ultimate goal. We're going for the hundredfold. Okay. okay. So we got three scriptures. We're going to build as as a foundation. These scriptures talking about staying on course, and then we're going to talk about those things that helps us stay on course: purpose, patience, and persistence. We're going to start with the book of Acts first. Let's listen carefully. Okay. Acts chapter 20, verses 22 through 24. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Save the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that the bonds and afflictions abide in me. But none of these things move me, neither counted I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now here's Paul explaining to us and expressing to us his purpose. And notice that he said that I may finish my course. So Paul has already established in his heart, I'm going to finish. The Holy Ghost and told me what's going to what's going to befall me. I already know these things. He said, "But these things don't bother me. I haven't even thought one time that no, mm, I can't do this here because uh, uh, when even the other disciples say, Paul, don't go there, don't do this here because there are people who are laying away for your demise." Paul says, "No, I have a race to run." Mm -hmm. And he says, "And in one instance, he's going to say, I have finished my course." Oh, so Paul has a course. He has a purpose. And every one of us, your purpose may not be Paul's, but listen, you have to finish it. You have to make up in your mind 
that I am going to finish whatever it is, the course that has been set in my life according to the purpose that God had dealt toward me. Right. That's why all things work together. Yeah. If you if you ever get out the purpose of God, don't expect the thing where God, why all this hell befalling me? Why am I going through that? Check your purpose. Are you going forth in the purpose that God has laid out for you? If you're not, then maybe that's why all these things are happening, but they're not happening for your good. When you are going according to God's purpose, it happens for your good. Just like Joseph. Joseph had a purpose and all the things that he went through. The devil thought he meant it for evil, but God turned around and worked it for his good. So it put him, even when, it, when they thought they put him in the pit, all they did was put him in place. Yes. Wait a minute, put him in place. For the, the, the slave traders to come by and find him and pick him and take him to there, okay, when he ended up in Potiphar's house. Oh, he got sold as a slave. No, I say, okay, they thought they were slaves, sell him as a slave, but I'm putting him in place. Yes. And then when uh, Potiphar's wife come to lie, she thought she would put him in prison. He should have lost his life. Anytime anybody, especially a slave, would have done what he did, that would have been the end of his life. But God said, no, there's a purpose. And so what the enemy thought he was doing for his evil, Cause him to be put in a place. Mm -hmm. All these things where the devil thought he was trying to kill the dream and the purpose that God had for Joseph. He, God says, no, I'm going to turn that thing around and work it for his good because Joseph has a purpose. And everything that Joseph went through, all the trials, all the testings, mm -hmm. yeah, all the trials and the testings promoted him step by step by step by step by step. If Joseph had a flunk any one of those tests, he never yeah. would have walked in his purpose and he never right. would have fulfilled the promise of God and he never would have got the position or the promotion that he received. Yes. And a lot of us are complaining and saying, Lord, when am I going to get my promotion? But God is saying, okay, when are you going to be in the place to be in the position to be promoted? The idea is get your lips fixed. If right. you get your lips fixed, then guess what? When you are tried and you're tested, you'll come through as pure gold, not just you, it's yes. me, the bishop, the apostle, the prophet, everybody. the evangelist, yes. the teacher, the pastor, it's everybody. Whenever we get ourselves lined up to say, okay, God, here I am in the midst of this test. See, we ought to get, that's why Peter said, whoo, rejoice with exceeding joy because baby, promotion is about to come. Amen. This is your time for promotion. When you are going through the fieriest trials of your life, that's when you say, wait a minute, hmm, this is nothing but a test. Just to try me. So if God is taking the opportunity right now to test me, that means promotion is around the corner. And so now let me gird myself. Let me position myself. Let me pass this test so I can go to the next level in God. Somebody type in next level. Next level. I, I, how many of you ready to go through the next level? So so embrace what embrace the trials, embrace the fiery trials, embrace the tribulations. Because because these things are tests and trials that God may test you know your heart. And if you come through it, guess what? It's promotion on the other yes. side. For God says promotion don't come from the east to the west. He says, I'm the one that do it. And so when I put you in that position, embrace it. Yes. Now we got the, because I know when I first read that, I said, Peter lost his mind. How am I going to rejoice <laughs> when I'm going through hell? How do I rejoice? He says, look at the flip side. Look at what's about to come. Think mm -hmm. about that mother that's going through all that pain, trying to push that big head joke out. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, after <laughs> that, the yeah. joy of the mother when she embraces that which gave her so much trouble. See, you're going to be able to embrace the thing that gave you pain. That God's going to cause you to embrace all the things that you went through. And you're going to say, they didn't make me bitter. They made me better. All that I went through, God allowed it to work it for my good. There are people that have taken all the demise that happened in their life and turned around. And it's making, it's making a great living for them. Mm -hmm. Motivational speakers, counselors life mm -hmm. coaches they've taken what they learned right. and said you know what i'm not gonna let this stuff kill me i'm gonna right. take it and learn from it and yeah. help the next purpose person because what these things bothered me mm -hmm. and i got a passion that this never happens to anybody else and that passion turns into a purpose and guess what god says you know what i'm gonna teach you how to profit in that yes oh this is just okay so, um tammy has a question she says um how do we know if it's God's test uh, is for our purpose or not. How do we know when God's test it? Okay, remember what I said. Everything ain't coming from God. Some things come from the enemy. But if we stay, well, if we know what God's purpose for is, is God will take that and work it for our good. Now think about this here. God always leads us with his word. He always leads us with his, with our, with his words. But that doesn't take away from the enemy and says, okay, just like you did, Joe. Let me let me test them. 
I mm-hmm. think I think I think Tim's ready to be tested because he's God's actually okay. Have you considered Tim? Yeah, I've, I've considered. Yeah. You move your hand back I, and watch he curses you. Nothing. It's okay. I'm gonna remember what's in his heart. He says, okay, T- test him, but don't touch his life. And so whatever the enemy tries for your bad, God turns around and get it. Now here's what we have to do. Do you know the word of God? See, we got to know the word of God. That's why David said, because you think about it, David slipped up a lot of times. Mm-hmm. He said, wait a minute. Right. How did I let Bathsheba get me? Wait a minute. How did I let my pride get me? Why are my hands so bloody? Because mm-hmm. I forsook the word. I knew the word. I, I knew I knew better. So David said, no, yeah. I got to have this word in my heart so that when I'm approached by anything that's contrary to the word, I said, no, that's contrary to the word of God. So when you're going through trials, try it by the word. Every spirit, Paul says, try every spirit by the spirit. What, is, what am I going through? You should be able to know what's God and what's not. Mm-hmm. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they won't follow. Com- compare it to the word. If you don't know the word, the enemy will hoodwink you. Mm-hmm. Did God say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got his word. So if I govern everything by the word, then I'll know what's God and what's not. And then I can be able to discern good and evil and I know how to, go- how to govern it. Now, think about this here. When Paul was praying three times, Mm -hmm. the enemy was sent to buffet him. Paul thought that I could just pray and God would come in and and rescue me. What did he tell Paul? He says, Paul, I've placed within you something that is more than sufficient for that rascal. Mm -hmm. It's my grace. Because I pour more grace on the humble. And you have humbled yourself. Even seeing that you seek after me to pray these three times, you have humbled yourself. So I've given you the grace that you need to overcome Satan. So Paul said, therefore, would I rather glory in my infirmity that the grace of God may be upon me, the power of God may be upon me. And guess what? He started dealing with the adversary. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we do. Now, here's the thing about it. When you're going through and you know it's not God, you rise to the level of the word and you start declaring the word. And then you believe what you say. Say not bind you on every hand. Yes. You will not feel I, I, you are a thief and a robber, and I take authority over you now. And mm-hmm. then you walk in there, and guess what? You don't be hypocritical. You don't say, well, I wonder if that works. Well, you know my prayers don't reach the ceiling. No, you stand firm on it because right. God said in his word, whatever yes. you ask in his name, Jesus' name, it shall be done for you of the Father. Stand on these words that you know that's in your heart because right. if these words flee you, and a moment of trial and testing and temptation, there's no help for you because the angels that sent forth the minister on your behalf only hearken to the word of God. Mm-hmm. And so when we say anything other than the word of God, they don't understand. I got to tell you, I, just, I make the joke. They speak you no, know, they speak you no know, doubt. Mm-hmm. They speak you no know, doubt. They want to hear the word of God, so we have to declare the word of God in the midst of it. So even as Joseph, mm-hmm. you notice, notice Joseph. Go back and read Joseph. He never said a discouraging word. He never read an accusation against God. He even 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 when the when the when the the the, the cook the, the the cup bearer got back and forgot about him, he was not enough fussing. Say that joke I got him back in the position and he <laughs> forgot all about me. Never. He, he he remained humble. So whenever you're going through something, the first thing you better do, and that's for all of us, mm-hmm. whenever we're going through a trial, humble ourselves immediately. Immediately. We talked about that last time. Right. Humility is the key. Right. And for where is for there, where there's great humility, there will be great grace. Hear me? Grace to go through and endure it while God is testing you. Grace to get the wisdom to overcome it if the enemy is doing it and take dominion over him. And so when we go through those things, the first thing we want to do is humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God and say, Lord, through your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding, you give us all that we need. Now, concerning this situation... Mm-hmm. If it be the test of me, Holy Spirit, give me the wisdom and instruction how to overcome and get the victory. If it's the enemy, I bind him right now in Jesus' name. And you know what? The Holy Spirit will reveal to you exactly what it is. He'll reveal to you whether it's the will of God. (laughs) Go ahead. No, I'll just say, and it's also um, when the enemy uh, does things, it bear fruit. Mm -hmm. Exactly like what God said it would. Nothing but to kill, steal, and and destroy. destroy. Think about that. Yeah. If it's stealing, if it's killing, if it's destroying, it's of the enemy. Mm-hmm. And God says, no, you can condemn those things, but you got to remember the word. So, yes. so think about it. When we're going through a trial, how do we respond? How do we react? 
Do we react according to the word of God and seeing what God says and seeing what God can do, what God has done, what God's word says? Or do we say, you know what? I can never get a break. It seems like every time I try to make one step, I get knocked two steps back. Come on, right. be honest with me. Is that mm -hmm. the word of God? No. It's not the word of God. It's not the word. What we're doing is we're speaking down unbelief and we're making our problems bigger than God. And guess what? We've all done, done it. it. And yeah. sometimes if we're not careful, we in the flesh and not in the spirit, we will do it. And mm -hmm. so that's why I'm drilling this message to the place where we get to the place where we renounce the hypocrisy. We just say, listen, get our, our mouth in check. And, and, and here's what I say. Why should I do it? I don't know if it's going to benefit me or not. Well, guess what? Do it anyway. And that's how I make up my mind. So you know what? Whether, whether my mind has not been convinced, that, thoroughly convinced that it's going to happen, that God can do it, you're going to say it anyway. Mm -hmm. What do you have to lose? You have nothing to lose. If it don't work, so what? It wasn't going to work in the first place. You're already in your demise. But 50% chance that, you know what? I just might believe God. I think I believe him. Mm -hmm. because uh, with him all things are possible oh, yes. and so yeah. therefore the first thing remember the first thing we do is whenever we're going through that trial I don't care what kind of test you're going through whatever purpose or whatever yeah. challenge or trial first humble yourself I hear the Lord saying just quickly humble yourself mm -hmm. and that's the point where God, the Holy Spirit that's can it. come in and just reveal so Submit many things to, to you Oh, but if you get prideful and proud, and mm -hmm. I've been here before, I know what to do. Because yeah. sometimes God brought, you know, deliverance for people. Like, look at Hezekiah. God brought deliverance, and then one time he got prideful. Oh, yeah, I don't need to ask God no more. And God says, okay, yeah, watch what's happening. But then he quickly humbled himself. Yeah. So, what you say? No, I was just uh, excited about what you were saying. Because one of the things when the enemy comes, it's, it's, a, it's a slight difference that you notice in the discerning when the enemy is um, attacking you. You know, because then God even tells you, he said, what you do, submit to me, mm -hmm. submit to God, resist him, and he will flee from you. So that, that, that's, that's key too. Once you humble yourself, do those yeah. things, and, and, and guess what? Immediately you will mm -hmm. see. You exactly. immediately, because guess what? He has no power over God. And once you've done those things, I've seen things like they were walking in instantly. Yes. Instantly victory, instant deliverance. And some of the times, um, you know, for example, when I know that it's God trying the heart, have you ever noticed that God is more of a test of your faith and heart? Mm -hmm. What's in your heart is revealed when God is testing you in a way. It's sort of like your child, you know, when you ask them for something. It's mm -hmm. like with tithes and offerings, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we get tested financially. Uh, you know, the word is there, but then the opportunity comes for you to act on the word in your giving or a principle that God is uh, admonishing us about in the word of God and that will be profitable to us. It brings protection. It also brings, it's, it, it, and, and God going to see if what you honor him. And um, so when the giving part comes, then, you know, that's a battle that no man knows except for God seeing your struggle. And so in that test right there is whether or not you're going to obey at that time. And that's, you know what? You, you, you know. When you bring that out, I was reading about Moses and God was dealing with Moses and dealing with Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I saw, I say, this is what this is the kind of God that we serve. He's so magnificent. He can do what he want to do. Right. Why would he even involve him? I said, okay, well, why in this sense that God did it because he wanted to do it? And this is he told Moses to do it. He told Moses to say this. He says, okay, this is yeah. what I'm going to do. It's just like God was like all over the place. It's like he's saying, don't try to figure me out. Don't try to <laughs> figure me out. Don't get too yeah. smart. Because yeah. Moses could have said, well, Lord, you told me to do this here, so I did it. And there was times that God said, I'm going to do this here. Pharaoh going to do this here. And Moses didn't have to do anything. And there were times he says, okay, go forth and stretch your hand forth and hell and fire going to come down mm -hmm. and go stretch your hands forth. And so there were times he had Moses do things. What? He was testing Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses, let me see if you're going to do it. Like yeah. the time when he told Moses, speak to, like one first time I told you to strike the rock. We got an awesome God. Yes. He always, he said, no, no, you, I, 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 I can't let you get too comfortable with me. God don't want us to get comfortable with him. He wants to always to depend on him. So one time he told Moses to strike the rock. The second time he told Moses to do what? Speak. Speak to the rock. Mm -hmm. And so Moses got in plenty trouble when he got mad and let his anger 
yeah. caused him to do disobey God. Yeah. And he struck the rock. Now, he could have said, well, Lord, you know they got on my nerves. <laughs> and then I said, no, no. That's between yeah. me and you. I told you Amen. what to do. Yeah. Look at Saul when he says, go in and utterly destroy all. Just want to see if we're going to obey. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just some simple things. Simple. And what did Samuel say? Obedience is better, better than, than sacrifice. sacrifice. And sometimes when God tests us, the majority of his testing is, I'm giving you something mm -hmm. to do. Do it. Do it. Yeah. And nine times out of ten. We want to know if we love him, fear him, and going to obey him. Mm -hmm. And it's all wrapped around in what? Honor. Honor. And that's, that's the type of test that God gives. So you will clearly be able to separate the two mm -hmm. because when he said when fear or a sudden uh, it come up on you suddenly he said fear not and that's just in other words that's you taking uh, observation or notice or paying attention or demanding to who you belong to so then it's sort of like you you know you're tapping God wait a minute hold up God is <laughs> God is in control you know, and, and he's a good God. Cause you know, why, you know why you want yeah. you want to know why he's good? I, I love those teachers that tell me I'm gonna have a pop quiz. Or tomorrow you're gonna have a pop quiz, mm -hmm. except for the one that come there, pop up, take out your notebooks and your pills, take out your pen and piece of paper. I what? Don't let nothing yeah. by any means come up on you unaware. Come up on you and unaware. So Morning you have come before destruction an unction whereby you know that hey, he always tells us. Think tells about us. it. Think about it. When he tells us. He, he, and he, sometimes he tells us to do something. He said, prepare yourself. Behold, I've given you the land. Mm -hmm. Behold, exactly. this is yes. going to happen. Behold, I've prepared yes, a wither woman. Lord. Behold, you, these things are happening. So, right. so he's going to let us know when that testing comes so we can be prepared. Mm -hmm. Just even when even when he was prophesied about the children of Israel, you right. know, when talking, talk, talking to Joseph, they're going to go into bondage for 400 years. All mm -hmm. these things are going to come to pass. And so God kind of alludes to us what's going to happen because he does not want to see us destroyed. Right, and so uh, 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 think about even with Job. Job kept rehearsing that stuff. This is the thing that I greatly fear. I'm quite sure God was hearing Job talking. Come on, Job, yes. now come on now. Uh, you're doing good. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm your hedge. And so the idea is we have to really watch this. And so that's the whole key about watching this here. So think about all these things are to build a strong fortitude to put us in a position. That whatever our purpose is, that we're going to be persistent and patient, because patience is definitely a key while you waiting on God, mm -hmm. and that is the trouble with a lot of us. We run out of patience, and then our lips and start taking over, right. and we start saying things we ought not say mm -hmm. when our patience should endure until the end, end of what? Until it comes to pass. Yes, yes. And so all these words gonna keep ringing us. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna interject them at the right time when the Holy Spirit say, bam, because I believe that's when it's gonna stick. Gonna stick, gonna stick. Mm -hmm. Think about it. So if we're gonna build ourselves to whatever we're going through. So this is what I don't wanna do. Yes. I don't want you to get problem minded. Or, or get to the point to where you trouble minded, tribulation minded, what? You just embracing those things and wonder when they're gonna happen. No, no. When they happen, know that I'm strong, I'm solid as a rock, my feet are on a firm foundation, mm -hmm. I have the word of God that's hidden in my heart, so now when the enemy comes in like a flood, the word of God, the faith of God, all these things are going to be a standard set against him, that I know how to stand and I know how to react, right. I know how to respond, yes. I know how to take the word of God and, re and, and counteract the words of the, in the, 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 mm -hmm. the, the, the things of the enemy. I, no, no, I, I got to say it. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Make yourself a steward of the word. Just get it in your hearts. No, I am a student and a steward of the word. And no matter what I go through, I'm going to give my father pleasure to know that I only spoke his word. You know, you know, like it's like a little child when they do what their dad say do. Did I do good, daddy? Yes. You did good. Amen. And so we wanted to walk in a way that pleases the Lord. Just like Jesus said, Father, I know you always hear me. I know yes. you're watching, you're checking Thank me you, out. And right. God was pleased. He said, this is my beloved son who I am. I'm yeah. well pleased. Mm -hmm. And so when he look at us, let's, let's, let that be our words that he speak of us. Never let, us, let him hear us murmur and complain. And we've, we've repented. We've renounced the hypocrisy. We shouldn't be saying one thing to another person and God hear us say something else uh, in our own secret chamber because mm -hmm. he's listening. And so we really need to get that take that to heart that 
We need to make sure that our words are never stopped against God. But whatever we do, we right. make up our mind that now my words are going to always be pleasing in the ears, side of, ears, God, ears of God. Amen. That he'll never hear me say, listen, he'll never hear me say anything negative concerning him or his will toward me for my life. And if mm -hmm. his promises, and so think about it, he says, his promises is not with doubt. His promises is not with consideration. His promises are yea and amen. I have to believe that and take that. So wait a minute, something's not mm -hmm. right. Think about Joshua. When they didn't, didn't, when they didn't win, Joshua didn't say, well, I guess somebody, somebody flipped out and did wrong. No, Joshua said, oh, time, time out. Mm -hmm. We're, he's ex he expected to win. Something's wrong. Right. So when everything, when things are not going like you want them to go, you say something, wait, something's wrong. Because I am supposed to win. Mm -hmm. I am my father's child. Right. And my father always wins. He's never lost a battle, and he doesn't have losers in his family. So I don't lose. Something has to, something's got to change. When Joseph went in the pit, he wasn't a loser. When he went into Potiphar's house, he wasn't a loser. Right. When he went to prison, he wasn't a loser. Mm -hmm. He was in transition. And I'm here to tell you what you're going right. through right now. It's not whether you're losing. You're just in transition. You need to make sure that you continue to listen. Continue to listen because we're going to make sure you stay on course right. for the things that we're teaching. And you got to admit, now, what, this is not us speaking. This is the Spirit of God mm -hmm. allowing us as vessels to pour into you to get you to be in a place where you are established, grounded, and rooted in God so that you know what? The things that start coming out of your mouth will be the things that are the promises in the Word of God, the Word of faith, and it's going to start happening. It's going to start right. manifesting. I just have one thing to say. Don't get arrogant. Don't get prideful when God starts operating and moving in your life and the things mm -hmm. that you say come to pass. Right. Be forever more humble and know this here, that God will store more grace upon the humble. So whenever your words start coming out and God don't allow any of them to fall to the ground because now all your words are, are solid and grounded and rooted in God and there's nothing but the faith in the word of God and now you've been, you, you've, you, you set your face like a flint and now all your tongue knows to speak the word of God. There's no, mm -hmm. now you will right. get sick if you ever speak anything contrary to the word of God. It's like you, you're so accustomed that there's nothing you can say to what people say, oh, you're so fanatic. I don't like hanging around you. Sorry, my, body, my bills get paid. My body stay healed. My children Amen. are blessed. Amen. Everything that I touch right. prospers. So if that, if that's, if that's irritates you, I'm sorry. You're just going to get from around me because I found out what works and I'm, governed by it and I'm accustomed to it mm -hmm. and that's just me now. I and the word yes. are one. Me and my yes. father are one. His word abide in me and I abide in him. And so I can't help but say yes. what Amen. my father said. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, uh-uh, I'm sorry. If you want any other thing, I can't help you. I can only speak mm -hmm. what I hear my father speak. Yes. We have to get to that place. And don't don't tell me that no nah, that Jesus was God. We can never do that. No, no. We can get to that place to where we don't speak nothing but what God says, and that's it. I don't care if your foot about to fall off and ride with gang green. You speak what the word of God says. If God says, listen now, and I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee, everybody else may doubt and lose their foot. But you say, you know what? I'm not moved by the majority. I'm moved by the word of God. Right. And he will put it in my heart that I confess his word and be faithful to confess it and not turn to the left or to the right. I will have whatsoever I said. And you will blow their minds when everybody else lose their foot and you get yours. Amen. Thank and you be healing. Lord. You said, I'm not moved by what I said. Yes. And start worrying about people thinking you're fanatical. You think you're religious. No, I'm in a relationship with a God that I truly, honestly believe he loves me and that he'll give me the desires of my heart and that his promise toward me are yea and amen. And I have what I say because it's not me that's saying it. It's him speaking through me. For mm -hmm. the words that I speak are not my words. They are my father's words. Amen. 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 So we're going to stop right there. We just got one verse for the scripture. God is doing mag magnificent things. I'm not worried about trying to get a title, three points. I'm just worried about getting this word in your heart because Amen. I want to see Amen. you and the Father's Amen. relationship get so grounded and rooted, so knitted together that they can't tell whether it's you or Jesus. You hear what I say? I can't. They look at you, they can't tell whether it's you or Jesus because you're walking like him, you're talking like him, you're acting like him. You're seeing things manifested in your life like him because we are made in his image. And so when people, that's what Jesus said. He says, Philip, Philip, when you see me, you see the Father. Father. Amen. And so I want us to get to the place where when people see us, they see the Son. Mm -hmm. 
and then go even further and, and see the Father. Amen. Mm -hmm. So this is what I want you to do. Now that your heart is getting stronger and stronger, I'm telling you now, yes. the word is getting indelible in your heart. You know that all these things are going to build you up to strengthen you so you can stay the course. So whatever your purpose is, whatever the promises of God is towards your life, whatever you believe in God for, mm -hmm. all these things are wrapped up into one. You will stay the course. So if you believe in God to get you out of debt, that's what you say. You find word, you find scripture, you find promises to stand on that. Don't say anything else. Don't tell me, oh, man, I've been in debt a long time. And I, no, no, no. Stop. Go back. Go back. Re re renounce that hypocrisy. Go back and get in the word and let's stand on it. Find somebody to encourage you. Write it down. Provoke yourself so you can say it and remember it. If you're talking about getting healed, stand on the word. Stop going back and forth. Stop being wishy-washy. Stop being double-minded. Either God's going to heal you. He's not. Make up your mind. If you're going to die, let's, let's, let's go on and deal with that. But I admonish you to speak Amen. his word and Amen. stand on his word and I stand in agreement with you. I release my faith. We release our faith and believe God. So from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, be healed in every yes, area of your life, physically, spiritually, and financially in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Your pocketbook be blessed. Your bank account be blessed. Your body be blessed. Your yes, mind be Lord. blessed. Your emotions be blessed. Your relationships be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, take every word that you have taught tonight and take it and build it up in your heart and then begin to shoot at the arrows of the adversary. Shoot down all of the strongholds and all the things of the enemy. They pull those things down and because our weapons are not carnal but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of those strongholds and you declare and decree the word of God and you be faithful to confess it. Faithful to stand on it and yes. believe he which promised is faithful to perform it. And I believe that God's gonna you're gonna start seeing God doing some things. And come back and tune in next Sunday. Get as many people as you can because I believe that when the saints come together and start believing like this and talking like this, oh what a time, what a time. And the yes. enemy are already packing up his suitcases. Say, you know what? Uh let's go pick on somebody that we can we can we can deal with because them them folks over there, they really getting serious about the word of God and about their father and how he operates in their life. And we ain't going to just be some folks just going to church being religious and talking about one day God's going to do something. No, God's doing something right now. And somebody ought to type in that thing before we leave. Say, he do it. <laughs> I don't know if you can spell it or not, but he do it. It's already done. It's already done. If you don't want to, if, you, if, if you're grammatically correct, just say it's already done. Amen. We love you. We're out of time. I'm excited to see you again next Sunday where we're going to get deeper and deeper. Look! Look at look at all this here. Look! Look like like my sister say. Look! Look! Look here. We we just right there. We look at all this we got to get to. So so I'm excited. So you see how the Holy Ghost is taking his time and doing what he want to do. Yeah. And you know this is just this is just a a, a blueprint. Mm -hmm. But he's I'm telling you, I just believe that once this teaching is over with, you're gonna be walking so mightily in the Word of God and so mightily in the power of God that the devil's gonna he's gonna be like hit you. You're gonna be like hitting Superman. You need, you're gonna be, your hands going to be hurting trying to hit you because the, the word of God is going to be working so mightily in your life. Amen. <laughs> now, yeah. here's the promise. Listen to this tape here at least three times before next Sunday. Amen. Amen. We love you. We'll see you yes. then. God bless.